Warhammer 3 has been available for almost two and a half years, and during that time we have seen the release of just four DLC, with the fifth one announced for later this year. So far we have seen the addition of four Lords for the Warriors of Chaos, three for the Chaos Dwarves, two Lords for Nurgle, and one Lord each for Grand Cathay, Kislev, Zinch, the Dwarves, and the Empire. The characters announced for the upcoming DLC will give us two more Lords for Khorne, one for the Ogre Kingdoms, and one for the Greenskins. I think it's fair to say that for many of the races mentioned, we will not see any further content. But what about the races that have not yet appeared in Warhammer 3? Will any of those races miss out completely on new characters? Well, in this video we are going to explore which races have likely seen their end times, and which could still appear in future DLC. Let's kick things off with the Beastmen who currently have four lords, with Kazrak One-Eye, Malagor the Dark Omen, Morgur the Shadow Gave, and Torox the Brass Bull. Since we received Torox at the end of Warhammer 2, they have been in a very good place mechanically, yet they still have several lords remaining from their 7th edition army book, many of whom would make great additions to the game. I think that Beastmen are good for one more lord, possibly to be added with an expansion of the map into Ind and Koresh, as that would be an ideal location for them to appear. Next, we head to the green and pleasant lands of Bretonia, who have also four lords, Luan Leonke, the Fey Enchantress, Alberic de Bordelot, and Repance de Lioness. While I would really like to see them receive an additional lord, I very much doubt that they will. Since they were a free DLC, I don't think that Creative Assembly has much incentive to expand upon them. On to the newest race to join the fray, the Chaos Dwarves. They received three lords with their introduction to the game, Astrogoth Ironhand, Drazoath the Ashen, and Zatan the Black. While the mechanics of the race are great, I do feel they were a little shortchanged by receiving only three lords. I expect this to be addressed with the addition of one final lord for the race at some point down the line. The Dark Elves currently have six lords, all released during the life cycle of Warhammer 2. Malekith, Marathi, Crone Helebron, Lokir Felhart, Malice Darkblade, and Rakath. While the Dark Elves would be a perfect candidate to appear alongside Slanesh and the High Elves in a DLC, I don't see them as having any major lords left to add. They certainly need some attention in the mechanics department, but the remaining characters just don't strike me as overly interesting. As such, I don't think we will see any more lords for the Dark Elves, and I feel that the Wood Elves may take their place in any Slaneshi themed pack. The Dwarves are one of my favourite races in Warhammer, and they have certainly enjoyed their fair share of content. They now have six Lords, with Thorgrim Grudgeborough, Ungrim Ironfist, Belagar Ironhammer, Grombrindel the White Dwarf, Thorek Ironbrow, and most recently, Malachi Mackison. I would be very surprised if the Dwarves were to receive any more Lords, and I think their time is done. They just need a few minor tweaks to integrate the new Deeps mechanic and the Age of Reckoning a little better, but there is no pressing urge to have any additional Lords. Moving on, we have the Empire of Man, which has certainly been one of the more popular races in the game for quite some time. They currently have five Lords with distinct mechanics and some interesting starting locations. We have Emperor Karl Franz, Balthasar Gelt, Volkmar the Grim, Marcus Wolfhart, and most recently, Elspeth von Draken, added in the Thrones of Decay. Now, the Empire has a lot of characters that can still be added, and being one of the most popular races, I think CA still has some surprises up their sleeves for them. 
I think we are likely to receive two more legendary lords, one of which is bound to be Boris Todbringer, as CA have stated in the past that he will get his time in the sun. Moving to the far east now, we find Grand Cathay, who currently have three lords, Yao Ying, Storm Dragon, Xiao Ming, the Iron Dragon, and Wan Bo, the Jade Dragon, who was added in Shadows of Change. I'm a little surprised that they only have three lords at this stage, so I fully expect that to change moving forward. I'd say we are in line for at least two more lords for Cathay, likely a dragon sibling and the monkey king. On to the greenskins, who are one of the better races in the game, with some very nice mechanics and a nice varied group of lords. There is Grimgor Ironhide, Azag the Slaughterer, Skarsnik, Wurzag, and Gron the Paunch, who I believe appeared in one of the best DLCs Creative Assembly has released. Well, we now know, thanks to CA, that the Greenskins are due another Lord in the upcoming DLC, alongside Korn and the Ogres. Gorbad Ironclaw, their final character from the army book, will be making his appearance. With this addition, I think that will be the last hurrah for the Great Green War. Next, we have the High Elves, who have six legendary Lords. Tyrion, Teclis, Alariel, Alithana, Imric, and Eltharion. As a race, the High Elves are fun to play thanks to their great roster, but let's be honest, their mechanics are severely lacking. They are most definitely in need of a rework, likely to occur I feel, when they receive what I believe will be their final Lord in a DLC alongside Slaanesh. I did a video about a year ago now that detailed their missing Lords, link should appear in the top right and is also in the description. For my money of the characters they have left, I think that Sea Lord Aislin is by far the most likely to make an appearance. Next up we have Korn, the first of our Chaos God factions. He is represented by a single Lord, Scarbrand the Exiled. Thankfully for fans of the Blood God, we know that they will receive not one, but two new Lords in the upcoming DLC. We will get Skulltaker as the DLC Lord, with an FLC Lord who I don't believe has been officially announced alongside him. I think it's fair to say that once that pack is released, the Blood God will not get any additional attention, and he will have to make do with watching the slaughter from the sidelines. On to the Bastion of the Old World, Kislev, who currently have four legendary lords. Zarina Katerin, Kostaltin, Boris Ursus, and Mother Ostankia, who made her appearance in Shadows of Change. I have to be honest here, I have no idea who could make an appearance for them in the future, but at a minimum they should get one more lord. I hope at that time we see their mechanics overhauled. They just don't make much sense, with Boris Ursus using the devotion mechanic and Kostaltin using the Ice Witch recruitment mechanic. It's perplexing to me. Okay, so let's take a bit of a breather as we are halfway through the races in the game. Our tally for new lords is as follows. We have plus one for the Beastmen, plus one for the Chaos Dwarves, plus two for the Empire, plus two for Grand Cathay, plus one for the High Elves, and plus one for Kislev. This of course doesn't include the lords we know about for Korn and the Greenskins in the next DLC. Now let's tackle those remaining factions. So next we have the Lizardmen, and they currently have seven legendary lords. There is Lord Mazdamundi, Krokgar, Tehenuin, Dictacto,e Gorok, Nakai the Wanderer, and finally Oxyotl. They do have a few characters left in their lore which could make interesting additions to the game, but I think given the limited number of DLCs we probably have left, and the fact that they have so many lords already, we are unlikely to see them receive any more. Besides, it's not the lack of legendary lords or start positions that are the issue with the Lizardmen, it's their lack of interesting mechanics. 
something I hope to address in my first major mod for Warhammer 3, the Medallion of Chakwa, which I am currently working on. Let's move on to a race that has received very little love from CA over the years, Norska. They currently only have two legendary lords, with Wolfric the Wanderer and Throg. If any of the older races needed some new blood, it's certainly them, so I suspect that we will see one more legendary lord, alongside, hopefully, a major rework of their mechanics. Next we have Nurgle, who has three lords. Kugath Plaguefather, Tamrakan the Maggot Lord, and Epidemius. I don't think there is much to really say about Nurgle, as I have a feeling that Creative Assembly are aiming for three lords for each of the Chaos Gods, and Nurgle, thanks to Thrones of Decay, has received his fill. The Ogre Kingdoms are next, a race which had so much potential. The mechanics, however, are half-hearted. Contracts not worth a damn, camps being unable to move, and being limited to a single big name. So much needs addressing. Fortunately, we now know that they will star alongside Corn and the Greenskins in the upcoming DLC, with Golfag Maneater taking his place alongside Greasus Gulltooth and Scrag the Slaughterer. Let's hope that the second iteration of the Ogre mechanics do them justice, as their roster on the battlefield is very enjoyable to play. Unfortunately for the Ogres, once Golfag makes his appearance, I don't see them receiving any more Lords. On to the Skaven, perhaps the most wild and outrageous race in all of Warhammer. They currently have six legendary Lords, Quick Headtaker, Lord Skrulk, Tretch Craventail, Icket Claw, Deathmaster Stickitch, and Throt the Unclean. The mechanics as a whole are pretty good though poor Queek, Skrulk and Tretch don't have anything beyond the core race mechanics to play with. Hopefully that will change when they receive what I believe will be their final legendary lord, Thankwall. As one of the rat's most infamous characters in the lore, I'd be shocked if he didn't make his appearance before the end of Game 3. Let's take a look at another of the Chaos God factions, Slanesh. According to the roadmap we saw before the release of Shadows of Change, Slanesh was due to receive the next DLC slot. I don't know why he got bumped for Corn, but I'm sure that he will appear in the future and receive two additional legendary lords to go alongside Nakari, who must be feeling quite lonely at the moment. I fully expect that Slanesh will get one of those lords as a DLC, alongside the High Elves and Wood Elves, with the other being an FLC released at the same time. Now, in the shifting sands of Nehakara, we find the Tomb Kings, who have been sitting untouched on four legendary lords since their release in Warhammer 2. Setra the Imperishable, Grand Hierophant Katep, High Queen Kalida, and Arkan the Black. I think it's long overdue for the Tomb Kings to get some attention. While the mechanics for the most part are good, I feel the books of Nagash could do with some adjustments, maybe make the locations of the books random, and make the bonuses more worthwhile. I believe the Tomb Kings will receive one more legendary lord before the game is done. They have a number of great characters to choose from, and some great unit choices that are missing from the game. The Cambric Titan is just begging to be added. Time to talk about another of the Chaos God factions, Zinch. They currently have two legendary lords, Karas Fateweaver and the Changeling. Now, if my thoughts on each of the Chaos Gods having three legendary lords is correct, Zinch is due one last lord. I think this lord will be added as an FLC, as I don't see there being another Zinch themed DLC in our future. Next we have the Vampire Coast, with four legendary lords, Luther Harkon, Count Noctilus, Aranessa Saltspite, and Silostra Diaphin. The pirates of the Warhammer world are in a pretty good place, and I honestly don't think they need any additional content. That said, with the addition of Grand Cathay into the game, a Cathayan themed vampire pirates lord would be an interesting choice if Creative Assembly ever felt the need to release one more pirate onto the high seas. 
The Vampire Counts are a race that has so many options for additional lords, based on the different vampire bloodlines. Unfortunately, as much as I'd like to see them all explored, I suspect that the Vampire Counts will only receive one more legendary lord. Neferata will likely take that spot and join the von Karstein family of Manfred, Vlad and Isabella, along with the Necromancers Heinrich Kemmler and Helmut Gorst. Regardless of how many additional lords they do receive though, there is no doubt that the Vampire Counts need a rework when it comes to their mechanics. Something that lets us explore the bloodlines in a more interesting way than the current blood kiss. The Warriors of Chaos currently have the most legendary lords in the game, with eight. Archaeon the Ever Chosen, Kolek Sanita, Prince Zigvald, Azazel, Festus the Leech Lord, Valkyr the Bloody, Village the Cursling, and Belakor. With these eight lords, and some good mechanics, they don't have any pressing need for anything more. As such, I'd say they have seen their end times. On to the final race in the game, the Wood Elves, who currently have four legendary lords, with Orion, Durthu, Dryka, and the Sisters of Twilight. As I have mentioned previously, I think the Wood Elves will appear in the DLC alongside Slanesh and the High Elves as their remaining characters are more interesting than what the Dark Elves have left to offer, and they have more potential units to add. And with that, we have completed the second set of races, and we have the following potential additions. Plus one for Norska, plus one for Skaven, plus two for Sanesh, plus one for the Tomb Kings, plus one for Zinch, plus one for the Vampire Counts, and plus one for the Wood Elves. When we add those to the possible counts from the first set of races, we get a total of 16 legendary lords. This of course doesn't include any new lords that might appear if Creative Assembly decide to release a Dogs of War race pack. At first this might seem like a lot of lords, but if we continue with the current trend of 3 legendary lords per DLC, plus a fourth as an FLC, we could add all of the legendary lords I mentioned in just 4 DLC packs something that is not completely out of the realm of possibility. We could see a DLC pack with Sanesh, the High Elves and the Wood Elves, where a second Saneshi Lord is added as the FLC. We might have a pack combining Beastman, Norska and the Empire, where Boris Todbringer is the second Empire Lord as their FLC. Another DLC with Grand Cathay, Skaven and Tomb Kings, with Zinch making up the FLC slot, this would include the Monkey King and Thankwar making their long-awaited appearances. And finally, a DLC including the Vampire Counts, Chaos Dwarves and Kislev, with Grand Cathay as the FLC. Of course, that leaves Nagash, who is likely to appear in his very own DLC as the final chapter for the Total War Warhammer trilogy. Now I'd personally love for them to do a lot more. Expanding the East and giving us in Koresh and Nippon would be a wonderful start. Unfortunately, I don't think we will see them make an appearance, though I think CA's time would be better spent on these than some other Warhammer version of Total War. After all, who cares about 40k anyways?